otters are voracious hunters, eating up to nine pounds of fish a day. They've even been known to kill and eat anacondas, the world's heaviest snakes, along with caiman, a type of freshwater crocodile. The giant river otter is the world's largest otter and grows to be an amazing six feet long. Their webbed feet and wide flat tails propel them swiftly through the water in search of food or a new place to explore. Their swimming underwater is graceful and effortless. They live in large family groups and are active, playful, and very vocal. And they are endangered. Giant river otters are the rarest otters with only a few thousand left in the world. Their biggest threats are from people who hunt them for their pelts and overfish the rivers, leaving them little food to survive. Zoos across the world are working together to save this endangered species, but very few zoos have them in the United States. Their playful antics, loud calls, and non-stop eating make them a favorite with zoo guests. The city of Santa Ana has committed $1.4 million towards the construction of the giant river otter exhibit at the Santa Ana Zoo. By placing them in Amazon's Edge, our beautiful exhibit with its thundering waterfall, our visitors' first animal encounter will be full of energy, sound, and action. The exhibit will have a state-of-the-art water filtration system, so our guests can see the otters through the underwater viewing window, and the otters will have crystal clear water to live happy and healthy lives. Clean water is vital to life, so we'll teach our guests about the importance of conserving water and using it wisely for ourselves and the animals around us. The city of Santa Ana has a way to make this vision a reality. An additional $600,000 is needed to complete the project. Help us bring the amazing giant river otter to its new home at the Santa Ana Zoo and allow zoo visitors the chance to enjoy this unique and beautiful creature. By making purchases with local businesses and vendors, more of your money stays close to home. This in turn supports our parks, recreation centers, libraries, and other services in development that enrich and improve the lives of Santa Ana residents. When you shop in Santa Ana, you are contributing to a culture of shared opportunity and progress. Santa Ana's youth commissioners will take you on a tour of some of their favorite businesses in the community. Our city has a strong presence of Latino culture. And what better way to express that love and pride than through a warm cup of coffee? Located in the heart of downtown Santa Ana, Café Calacas is a great place for people from all walks of life to come together for Mexi Fraps and Pan Dulce. Catch them early in the day and you might get a hold of some chilaquiles for a hearty breakfast. Café Calacas offers a rich variety of savory foods and refreshments that will make your mouth water. Along with delicious dishes, the restaurant is an excellent place to hang out with your friends and converse over great food. It's my favorite way to start the day. Left of the Dial Records has a wide selection of music, but I always come down for the latest hip-hop releases. With a superb knowledge in music, the owner keeps his shop stocked with new and used records while providing a friendly atmosphere for all. If you have a passion for discovering new music and you haven't been to Left of the Dial yet, I highly recommend a visit. Left of the Dial Records also offers CDs, cassettes, shirts, and posters. There's a lot going on in this little record shop, and it's incredibly fun to partake in. It's important to support local businesses, and I like supporting good art as well. You could say I have become something of a regular. Don't miss out on the great small businesses like Left of the Dial Records in Santa Ana. VIP Dance Studios, where I come to unwind. I feel like the instructors here care about making Santa Ana kids better dancers. They offer a great selection of exercise classes for anybody looking for a fun and supportive environment. I have been practicing at VIP Dance Studio for two years, and it has been a rewarding experience. I'm so grateful to have had the chance to broaden my skills and meet so many warm and ambitious people. This place is where kids can come to build their confidence and become well-rounded young adults. VIP Dance Studio is a warm environment, and it brings me closer to my community. My favorite place to eat after school is Las Tortugas Grill. With the most delicious tortas around, this is a frequent hotspot that I and many others love to dine at. Since it's a food truck, 
You're able to walk around the back and see all of the fabulous employees working the grills in one well-managed space. Coming to Santa Ana, everyone should experience the wide and diverse food trucks we have to offer. In my opinion, Las Tortugas is one of the best food trucks around. I would personally recommend anyone looking for good food to give them a visit. You cannot afford to miss this little known city treasure. Whether you're in the mood for unique and savory cuisine, the opportunity to expand your record collection, or to make new connections and explore the city, Santa Ana has a wide variety of businesses that inspire and invite excitement. It's important to be mindful of our purchasing decisions and remember to invest money back into our community. Investing in local businesses helps create a thriving city based on shared opportunity. That's why the Santa Ana Youth Commission supports the citywide effort to remind residents to shop local and shop Santa Ana. The city of Santa Ana traces its origins to the 1760s. By the 1930s, the population was over...
Good evening. Good evening. Could, any, could everybody sit, please, for a moment? I would like to call this Planning Commission meeting of May 13th, 2019 to order. Madam Secretary, please take roll. Commissioner Benavides. Present. Commissioner Rivera. Present. Commissioner Alderetti. Vice Chair Contreras Leo. Here. Chair McLaughlin. Present. Commissioner Cano. Present. Chair Nguyen. I mean, I'm sorry, Commissioner Nguyen. Here. Chair, you have quorum. Thank you. Um, would everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Before we get started, I'd just like to say that tonight's agenda is very full. We have a lot of different uh, activities going on on this agenda, and we're trying to get it done in an expeditious manner, so if any way you could help us with that, we appreciate it. Um, we'll now go on to public comments. Does a member of the public have any comments on a non-agenda item? If you filled out a card and made a request, please come forward at this point in time. I believe I have one from Jim Kendrick. Good evening, uh, Commissioners. I'm just going to make it short and sweet. I attended the last council meeting and I was very shocked. It's time to get that general plan in done. And first of all, developers shouldn't have to keep going back and forth between the Planning Commission and, the and your planning and the council. Uh, parking again, we want to talk about it. The council was tied against because the council's not full. Council can't, is tied up on a 6-3-3 vote all the time now because Ward 4 is not full. So here we are going back. Developers are being tied up on decisions made here at the Planning Commission because we're in a quagmire. We need to get our standards in order. When all development comes before you, and I, I mean, I mean, developers are busting their whatevers to, to in compliance of what we have. And it's not fair to developers to keep running through the quagmire here at the city to get their projects through. We are a city and we want to be a city. You do on your due diligence to make that happen and get it to the council. And the council's now, again, in a quagmire because Ward 4 is not full. So tonight, there's a lot of things coming before you and there's a lot of great projects coming before you. And again, I've looked at every one of those projects coming before you tonight, and they're great projects. And I think you, in due diligence, give the developers their fair share shake tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Does anyone else have any public comments at this time? Hearing none, we'll close the public comments and we'll move on to the consent calendar. At this time, the commission would consider the... Uh, Approval of the minutes of April 22nd, 2019. So moved. We have a second. Second, thank you. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? At six, there's one absence. Uh, the next, we have a motion to consider the absence of uh, Eric Alderetti. So moved. Second. Second, yeah. second, David. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At six zero, at Eric Alderetti absent. We'll move on to the business calendar. The formal action of the Planning Commission shall, shall become effective after a 10-day appeal period unless the City Council holds a public hearing on the matter. Then the formal action will become effective on the day following the hearing and the decision by the, decision by the City Council. An appeal from the decision or requirement of the Planning Commission must be filed with the clerk of the council and a copy sent to the planning department within 10 days of the date of the commission's action. The appeal may be made by any interested party, individual, or group. First item on our calendar for, for hearing today is the conditional use permit 
Number 2019-13 to allow drive-through window service. Conditional use permit number 2019-14 to allow after hours operation. And number, and number 2019-17 to allow walk-up window service for the new restaurant in and out Burgers located at 1815 North Bristol Street. At this point in time, uh, the uh, planning department has requested that we continue this item until the 28th. Do we have a motion to continue this Move item? Continue it. Okay, second. second. Second from Cynthia. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Six zero, Eric Alderay absent. We are now also going to do a change in the agenda, and that is we're going to move up item six to the next position. Item six, amendment application of 2019-02, conditional use permit and of 2019-12 and variance number 2019 with property located at 1904 West 1st Street, 711. Um, before you get started, I'd like to, we have a few more changes here. Uh, note the recommendation on this matter will be forwarded to the City Council for final determination if you wish to address the Planning Commission, please fill out a request from the Secretary. Comments are, uh, and does the Commission have any questions? Of, should the Commission have any questions of staff? Uh, Madam Secretary, have we received any written communication? We have not. Okay. Go ahead. Good evening, Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. This is a request to construct the new 7-Eleven convenience store and gas station located at 1904 West 1st Street. This is an area showing more or less the proximity of the location in terms of Santa Ana. The project site is indicated by the right triangular as depicted on the aerial map, and it's located at the southwest corner of Daisy and 1st Street. Um, as shown, it's primarily surrounded by commercial uses to the west, east, north, and a vacant lot to the south. There are some residential units to the um, east of the property as well. Um, most of the commercial uses as shown are um, auto repair services and you do have a restaurant to the west of the site. The site's approximately 70,000 square feet and it was developed back in 1960 as a drive-in restaurant and has been operating since then as an eating establishment. The last tenant was Don um, Antojisos Don Chepe, and they actually vacated the site back in 2016, so it has been vacant since. This is an image of the southeastern corner of the property, just showing the existing conditions of the restaurant. In terms of project analysis, the proposed project does comply with the Santa Ana Municipal Code regulations pertaining to the C2 development standards. Um, with the exception of a request for one additional variance sign that I'll go over in shortly. So as proposed, you do have the 20, uh, a 2,480 square foot convenience store being proposed at the southeast corner of the property, I'm sorry, southwest corner of the property, and then a 810 square foot gas station canopy that will accommodate two fueling pumps stations that will accommodate up to four vehicles at a time. And the project site also does accommodate a total of 10 parking spaces, with one of them being ADA compliance. So this next um, image shows more or less the circulation of the uh, proposed site. The driveways off of Daisy are being um, um, limited in terms of the access, there will be only access to right in, right out, and left in only, so no left out turn, turning vehicles will be allowed at this project location. In terms of one of the applications, the applicant is requesting a variance to allow one additional monument on site. The current code requirements allows for one max, maximum of one monument site for this um, particular project site based on the square footage. Um, the applicant is proposing to install two monument signs, one off of First Street and the other one off of Daisy Avenue. 
Um, staff has added some conditions of approvals to limit the size of these um, mon two monument signs. Um, particular, one of the concerns was the one off Daisy Street, and that one's being limited to a maximum of four feet, um, just due to the fact that it is adjacent to some single-family residential units to the east of the property. This other image shows the proposed um, monument sign option two. So option one allows them to have two monument signs. Option two basically is stating what's allowed per code. Um, so if the applicant does design the monument sign like this VL shape um, monument design, they could comply with the Santa Ana Municipal Code. But again, as part of the application, the applicant is requesting for approval of variance to allow one additional monument sign. Then one of the other um, concerns that staff does have based on the proposed site plan is the location of the trash enclosure. Um, the way it's currently being designed does have some, or, or does potentially can create some issues in terms of uh, visibility as well as creating a hiding place. Um, so one of the conditions of approval is that the applicant resubmit a site plan to relocate the location of the proposed um, trash enclosure. Um, this is just an elevation of the proposed 7-Eleven convenience store. Um, so the top portion is the front elevation that will be facing the street, and then the bottom one is the rear elevation that faces the um, vacant lot to the um, south of that. The canopy elevations were not included as part of this PowerPoint presentation, but they were attached to your staff report, and the design of the canopy also does have this contemporary architectural Spanish style and does incorporate some of the base layer as well as the same roofing tile design. So as part of this application, um, the applicant is requesting an amendment application, which is pretty much a zone change. The current land use destination for the subject property is currently zoned N1, which is light industrial. And what's being proposed is to change it from light industrial to general commercial, and that is consistent with the 1998 general plan land use element that was approved by the city. In addition to that request, um, the city is requesting to modify the zones of the surrounding properties from M1 to C2, and then you do have one particular property to the left of the subject property that's currently zoned at C1, which will be changed to C2. Again, that will be consistent with the general plan land use element that was adopted back in 1998. Lastly, the applicant is requesting approval of a condition use permit to allow the operations of 24 hours. And that is more or less consistent with some other 7-Elevens that we have in the city, um, but other businesses along First Street. And we do have two convenience stores and gas stations located at the intersection of Fairview and First Street um, that have these type of operations and they're open 24 hours as well. As part of this application, a mitigation negative declaration was prepared to comply with CEQA. And um, in terms of the environmental factors, most of them came with no impacts and less than significant impacts with the exception of biological resources, geology, soils, noise, transportation, hazards, and hazardous materials. Those particular environmental factors um, do require mitigation measures that were attached as part of Exhibit 10. With that, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission recommend to the City Council approve an adoption of mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting program, environmental review number 2017-140, amendment application number 2019-02, condition use permit number 2019-12 as conditioned, and variance application number 2019-01 as conditioned. That concludes my presentation. I'll feel free to answer any of your questions. Thank you. A couple of, of questions. The application here uh, is not requesting uh, alcohol, sale of alcohol, from what I understand from the report, staff report, that it's it's prohibited. Correct. That's correct. And uh, what would be what makes it feel that it's currently prohibited? And is that something that the applicant can, can if approved? Uh, 
that the applicant can come back and potentially in the future request uh, it, ABC. So based on that. current code re regulations that pertain to es establishing and selling alcohol, this particular property does not qualify because it is in close proximity to another convenience that currently already sells alcohol. Would, would they at some point be able to, to approach a city for a variance of some sort? No, so they cannot apply for a variance based on distance requirements. Variances are only applicable to development standards. Okay. Uh, I have a few other questions that I'll go ahead and-, and uh, go ahead. No, Well, I'm curious, I don't know if we're gonna have any, any public, any members of the public speak. Uh, so I will, uh, I will, I will hold, hold off for now, see if any other uh, commissioners have any comments, hear any comments from the public and then I'll follow okay. up with my questions at that point. Thank you. Cynthia. So I'm looking at the um, 6 and 15 of the conditions and the 6 and 15 on 6-33 and 15 talks about having a television system inside for the inside the premises and number 6 talks about meeting with the police department to come up with a safety plan. Will they not also have the ability of those <coughs> recording on the premises as well? Or is it, why is it only for inside? They will require it to provide both. So they need to submit a plan to the police department and they should require um, surveillance cameras for the exterior as well. Okay, that's not um, detailed. It is for the inside, but not for the outside. The six, the six just says they'll come up with the safety plan. So I think that it would be good to detail it out like we did in 15, if that's included. We do have an ordinance that the police department regulates in terms of safety. Um, so they will have to actually comply with that ordinance section as well. That does require that surveillance system to be to the exterior as well. Okay. Any other questions of staff? I guess the one question I have is has to do with the fact that it's a going for 24 hours and they're looking for two sets of uh, two monument signs and I would imagine it's also adjacent to a single family neighborhood is there going to be some issue relative to the lights of the signage being on for 24 hours so it's based on the era photo there are some single family homes to the east of the subject property um, the monument sign that's being proposed more or less aligns to the auto repair services um, to the east of the property. Um, the lighting for the particular property is required to be illuminated downwards, so it would not create any blight issues to the surrounding vicinity. Okay, and my understanding was that there was some type of move to get from two to one. Is that still, but the recommendation is still to have two? Correct, so there's two options that this body could take. Um, option one is approve the variance to allow them to have two monument signs or deny the variance application and have the applicant comply with the city's current regulations that would allow one monument sign. So if I go back to the um, site plan, um, right now this is basically option two, which is what is in compliance with the city's regulations. That's correct, the one at the intersection of Daisy and like Verse. Correct. And that's considered to be one monument sign? That is correct. Okay. All right. David, do you sure, want to yeah. and address your questions? Sure. Go ahead. I have a couple of, of additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, right now while we're on this uh, question with regard to the monument sign, what their, their request, how does it differ from, from that L-shaped sign there at the, the top right? It doesn't much, so the applicant actually requested to have two additional uh, monument signs. There are some regulations that do require that these um, convenience stores and service stations allow for the, dis for the display of the pricing of fuels. Um, so this more or less, either option, based on SAS recommendation, will comply with state regulations. So where the additional monument sign that you're 
that they're requesting. Does that show there on that? Correct. So going back, option one, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's two circular areas in purple, um, and that's the location of the proposed monument signs. So they're asking for those in addition to or in place of the... the, uh, the one no, so the request two. is to allow two monument signs instead of one. So option one is two monument signs, okay. one along Daisy and the other one off of First Street. And then option two is one monument sign at the corner intersection. But this wouldn't require a variance. Only option one requires a variance. A okay. uh, couple of uh, follow-up follow -up questions. With the, the fueling station that's being proposed, uh, what types of impact, w just south of that, what type of impact will that have or does that have uh, to, to the soil, to the surrounding area long term? Uh, and, and I, one is I'm, I'm s just interested in, in getting some information with regard, getting some information with regard to that. The other is just south of that, it's currently a city property, Daisy and Walnut, uh, that property's in under, um, uh, uh, ENA uh, exclusive negotiating agreement with a community group that's looking to turn that property potentially into a, a micro farm. Uh, so you'd be essentially growing s these uh, fruits, vegetables uh, at that location, just adjacent to you know, potentially a, a fueling station that's being proposed uh, and being considered tonight. So, so do we have any type of information as to you know, the, the impacts to the soils. So as part of the project, they, they went through the environmental analysis and there's no impacts that were identified that it would have. There are some mitigation measures to assist mitigating any potential impacts in the future, but um, in terms of the actual underground storage tanks, they do need to comply with state regulations for that. And um, the applicants also here, as well as a property owner and the business operators, and they have more information regarding that. Uh, I, I would be interested in hearing from them uh, a bit of more about that. Uh, however, before getting to that, uh, going back to, to uh, Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chair's comment with regard to the, uh, the security plan, which is condition number six, mentioned that, that there would be a security plan approved by the police department. And uh, there's a, a reference of, uh, on condition 15 of specifically spelling out uh, surveillance uh, or closed circuit television system that captured, that would capture events inside the premises. Uh, it, I, I would, I think a simple fix there is to include uh, recording events inside and outside the premises just by simply adding those. That, so that would be, if we get there, uh, if there's a motion and we get that, something that I would uh, recommend for our uh, of course, to, to add. Additionally, with regard to this, uh, specifically speaking to the, the security, I'm quite familiar with this this uh, this location. Uh, I uh, I live about uh, ten blocks, perhaps, from there. This is the the way that I actually I just drove right past it to be able to come here to the meeting, and so. Uh, I know the, the history of that, that specific location in the area. Uh, if you go back just a, a couple of slides to, to the, uh, the aerial, uh, uh, just south, there's a city lot there, Daisy and Walnut, the one that I referenced uh, a bit ago. Just as across the street to the south, uh, west, that building there, it's a, it's a county social services building, so it's, a, it's where uh, general relief uh, services are provided and that site there that's now empty it was previously the uh, Orange County Rescue Mission site uh, and then just north of that it was previously Don, Ch Don Chepes most recently and prior to that it was a Taqueria de Guadalajara uh, both I believe operated uh, or th uh, 24 hours uh, it, that that area so I want to mention that I'm glad to see that there is a uh, some investment being considered and potentially a development of this site uh, because it has it is blighted and has been for for a couple years uh, boarded up and and uh, graffitied and and it's so it's it's an eyesore currently. Uh, however, over the years, 
uh, it's not just currently been an eyesore and be, been troublesome a uh, number of years back. Uh, it's that both the rescue mission site and then that the site of that we're discussing tonight has been a gathering place for folks uh, uh, for illicit activities, uh, loitering, uh, homeless have gathered there still now uh, every so often. Uh, uh, drug sales and, and, and use uh, has been taking place in that in that area for years, for some time. Part of the reason why the city uh, decided to acquire that that uh, the rescue mission site, uh, and with regard to the the security plan, I'm glad that that there is one here, but I, I think it does need to be uh, more specifically called out, as as we ref that the uh, as is pointed out in the aerial here. There are single family homes directly across the street. They have been negatively uh, impacted by some of the loitering and other, other activities that have taken place there. So if we're, if we're going to consider this, uh, uh, this use, particularly a 24 hour for my commissioners, I, I would say that we would uh, heighten the uh, security uh, to ensure that, to, to mitigate and address any of that, th those activities that have been taking place in that area for some time. Frankly, I think part of the challenge for the previous restaurants there th that were, that tried to operate and then were not able to be successful in any closing, I think has been part of these issues of, of the loitering and drugs and other things that have been taking place there. Uh, so security, specifically security, uh, a security guard okay. is something I that I would. Question. Did we want to open the public hearing first and then bring all this back? If that's, we yeah, that probably makes sense. Yeah. Is that fine? Thanks. Okay. So at this point in time, we'll open for public hearing. I do have a number of cards on this item. Jerry, I'm going to need your help if we could because we're going to need translation. Um, but I'd like to start first with the applicant. And maybe if we can get the applicant up here. Some of the questions that are being raised right now, maybe the applicant has a good answer for us. How's that? Good evening, sir, and uh, thank you very much uh, to the Planning Commission for your consideration of our, of our uh, change in uh, time slot and, and on the agenda item. My name is Ben Steckler. I am a certified planner and I work for uh, Fiedler Group, who is the engineering firm of record. Um, we are the applicant uh, as representative for 7-Eleven, who is the, the applicant themselves. Um, we'd like to thank staff uh, for all their hard work over the past couple of years trying to get us to this stage right now where we could be before you um, and actually get consideration for our project uh, so that we could uh, alleviate the blight at this corner. Um, we do have uh, a couple of comments that I, staff did a great job of presenting the project. There's a few clarifications that um, I can offer based off of, off of uh, questions that I've heard already as well as um, some, some questions that I have of you. Um, and or requests on behalf of, of uh, 7-Eleven itself. Um, as far as the site security, which is the most recent thing that was discussed, 7-Eleven um, operates where there will be cameras under the canopy facing at each of the um, fueling positions. They operate with cameras on the building facing out towards the streets and their parking area and, and their entire premises is covered by exterior cameras. These cameras record uh, high definition. They uh, save their footage for 30 days um, and cooperate with the police department in case there's anybody, um, any, any nefarious activity in the area, the police are free to come in and, and uh, uh, request to see the footage um, and they will, they will allow that to happen with no problem. Um, they have in other cities actually helped the police department because of their footage and the high definition that it is, um, there have been cars driving by that had created a, an, an issue somewhere else and were going by. And because of the, the high definition of the security cameras themselves, they were able to not only uh, identify the car, but identify the license plate and apprehend the people who had committed crimes elsewhere, not just on our property um, or their properties, I should say. Um, and they also have the, the security cameras in, inside the stores, um, in the sales area, in the back room, in uh, the coolers, just about everywhere uh, within their store other than the restrooms. They cover the, the store itself in order to make sure that, that there's no 
um, possibility that anybody's committing a crime, and if they do, that they get caught on camera while they do it. Um, and that is also recorded on a DVR system and saved for 30 days. Um, the employees of a 7-Eleven uh, have two different types of silent alarm monitoring. Um, one that's actually in their pocket, it's like a remote control, but it's a little push button. And so if they're ever anywhere on the site, and they feel that there's some activity that the police need to be involved with, they can reach in their pocket and push a button. And that sends a signal back to their uh, uh, control system inside the store, and it sends a request to the police department directly for uh, a unit to come out. Um, they also have at their, at their front counter a, a button similar to that where the, the cashier can push that button and request the same thing, so it's like a silent alarm. Um, or it is a silent alarm, I'm sorry. And um, they have the ability to control uh, cooler doors, uh, but that's for areas where they're doing alcoholic beverage sales, so I don't think that that would be installed here since we're not going to be doing alcoholic beverage sales. We do understand the, the codes within the city of, of Santa Ana and the restrictions thereon. We do understand the proximity of both the residential community behind, uh, to the southeast as well as to the other sellers that are nearby. And we understand that that is a, a code restriction. We have not um, requested that, and we uh, do not plan to request that uh, because of the codes of the city of Santa Ana, and we respect that. Um, beyond that, there were some items in the staff report that we are um, questioning a little bit of. One of them is the circulation pattern, and we understand that that's, uh, we think that that's a misunderstanding of, of the conclusion section of the traffic impact analysis, which we completed for this project. The recommendation section and the conclusion section actually say something slightly different than one another. We're, uh, we reached out to our um, traffic consultant earlier today because this, this uh, staff report was released at about 5.30 p.m. on Friday, so we didn't have an opportunity to do it until today. Unfortunately, our traffic uh, engineer was out on vacation until tomorrow, so we couldn't get a clarification from him, but we will get that as soon as we can and enter that into uh, the, the staff. The question that we have, though, is for consideration of the southerly driveway on Daisy. Right now, there's a limitation that people coming out of the store um, exiting onto Daisy from the southerly driveway. We understand the northerly driveway is right in, right out, and we voluntarily marked it as such on our site plans. Um, but for the southerly driveway, we would request that people leaving the site be allowed to go uh, north, make a left out of the southerly driveway and go up to First Street, rather than going down um, and being required by the, the requirements in the code, or I mean in the uh, staff report. Um, and going straight down towards um, the single family residences that are behind us um, and to the south, uh, south and southwest, or south and southeast, I'm sorry. Um, so that's one consideration that we'd like to present to you if you could um, make a recommendation going forward for approval, if you could include something in there that um, allows uh, either our, our revision of that during the next month before the, the tentatively scheduled um, uh, city council meeting um, and or, you know, we understand that city council will make the ultimate decision. We have to make that request of them as well. Um, so that's one thing that we'd like to bring up right now. The um, conditions of approval uh, for the conditional use permit itself for the 24-hour operation. Uh, condition approval number four. Uh, we believe that that's the one to relocate the, um, the trash enclosure. Uh, the current location for the trash enclosure was actually a recommendation from staff last year sometime while we were in design review. We put it there. Uh, we identified that it was going to possibly be a septic issue. Um, and, and staff insisted that they needed uh, pedestrian access off of, off of Daisy and that that's where they wanted it to have the pedestrian access off of Daisy. So we complied and we knew that we would have the surveillance system. We knew that we would have on-site lighting required by code um, to illuminate, a, I believe it's a, a minimum of a one-foot candle on every area of our property itself directed downward so it faces our property itself. 
um, and that, that area would be would be lit enough to see anybody and capture them on our surveillance system. So we accepted their lo proposed location, but we believe, uh, as I said, we got these these recommendations as of Friday night at 5:30. We believe we found a solution to that. Um, we are checking the code right now, or I. I had my uh, engineers today start checking the code to make sure um, because the trash enclosure is adjacent to something called the Healy tank. The Healy tank and the vent risers are both right next to each other, right next to the trash enclosure on the inside. These, the Healy tank itself is something that's required by the South Coast Air Quality Management District specifically for um, air quality. And if you're, when you're fueling with gasoline anywhere in California, there's a little rubber nozzle that goes around the, ho the, the, the dispensing nozzle for the fuel. That nozzle uh, captures vapors. Those vapors go back, they're stored and processed in the Healy tank, and then they're re released safely uh, through the vent risers per AQMD standards. Um, so that it, it's something that, that just helps air quality. Um, and so we have to make sure that, that where we relocate that trash enclosure in the Healy tank complies with, with building codes and safety codes uh, that are in place right now. But we believe that we can present something to staff before city council that would be a revision, um, minor revision to meet that, that condition number four uh, of the CUP. Um, condition number 18 of the CUP is a little bit more problematic for us. That restricts time of deliveries. Uh, condition number 18 is specifically related to uh, saying that between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. no deliveries can happen on the site. Last year while we were in design review, uh, there was an issue with the relocation of the tanks, the, the underground storage tanks, which there's another question of and I'll get to that one next. Um, the relocation of the tanks was required by staff to go in between the canopy and the building. When they put it in between the canopy and the building, that impacts operations of the building and the parking of the, of the building for the about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour a day uh, or every few days, depending on the frequency that they have to fill the, the tanks, um, when the truck is there and filling those tanks. So having it be between, uh, only be able to be there between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. impacts the ability during the most used time of the day for those parking stalls. So we'd like to request uh, some consideration there so that uh, perhaps we can have uh, uh, a, a different time and we're asking, checking with operations to find out what that time could be, where it could be acceptable uh, to, to the city um, as well as to the operations of the store. Um, beyond that, um, there is fresh fruits and produce in all new 7-Eleven stores uh, that are standard there, fresh fruits, fresh sandwiches, salads, produce, uh, a variety of different things, fresh baked goods. All of these things are typically delivered on a daily basis from a, for a it's a medium sized truck like a box truck. Uh, that truck, it comes in the early morning hours to make the deliveries. The loading zone for that truck is actually um, adjacent to the western property boundary, uh, the northwestern property boundary on the site plan and is right off of First Street. We would request as well that that truck be allowed to come in and, and, and provide the fresh fruits, fresh produce, uh, fresh salads, fresh sandwiches, things like that that um, can be offered during that day because they, they bring those in every day fresh for consumers to come in and have some, some quality uh, food that uh, makes it more of a neighborhood market than just a convenience store. Um, so those are the conditional use items that we had a question with. Um, I did mention that we would talk about the, the storage tanks themselves. The underground storage tanks are regulated by multiple codes, uh, National Fire Protection Agency, uh, California Fire Code, California Building Code. Um, these codes require for a double wall tank system at, and, and monitoring of that system to make sure if there's any leaks, it's caught and it's fixed right away. The double wall tank system means that the inner tank is what stores the fuel. The outer tank is there so that if there is ever a rupture of the inner tank, uh, the outer tank can capture any leaks that happen from the tanks themselves. The monitoring system happens on the lines that go from the tank to the, to the dispensers um, and around the dispensers to make sure that if there's any leaking or anything in one of the, the connection points or anywhere there's a fuel loss or a, a change in the pressure within that, that system, it is caught and it is fixed. Uh, in order to prevent uh, any, any 
issues with the groundwater or the soil contamination on that site. And this has actually been, uh, the double wall tank system was started in the 1990s or, or required to be modified for all service stations since the 1990s and has been continuously improved upon by the state of California and the regulators for fueling stations um, specifically so that we have better uh, control over the systems and less contamination and less uh, uh, issues with any of our, our products uh, contaminating soils for anybody uh, surrounding the neighborhood and or the water table that's below. Um, there's also a condition of approval in the mitigation monitoring reporting program that requires us to do geotechnical review and submit a geotechnical report. In that report, it would say, uh, uh, would evaluate where the groundwater system is and, and give us any recommendations uh, specifically so that we can make sure that we don't have any issues there as well. Um, Danny, for there more to what you s need to talk about because we've gone on for quite some time on this and it, it you know, I'm not sure where we're going with, you kind of question some of the things that are going on with regards to what's been agreed upon or not agreed upon with the planning department. Um, Oh, yes, sir. I just have a, a two, two more items. I'm sorry. I was trying to respond to questions as well uh, in advance as well as, as cover my questions. And, and okay. um, the variance uh, that was requested, we are happy to consider option two. We'd never been presented that until today that it was a feasibility to have an L-shaped sign, so we're considering that right now. Um, but we do need uh, at a minimum to meet visibility requirements if, if we went with the option of two signs. Um, we would need, instead of the four foot or five foot signs with 20 square foot limitations, we would need um, six foot high and 32 square feet in order to comply with visibility requirements there. Um, and or we would just ask that, that uh, per the size of our, of our um, frontages that we would be allowed to comply with code because the rec recommendations of staff is, is much less than code would allow as, as general. Um, that that uh, concludes my items for that I had on discussion and I'd like to be, be able to be here to pre, uh, answer any questions you may have. Does the commission have any question of Ben? Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Uh, Go ahead. Seem ben. to me the, uh, the applicant have raised some issue regarding to the uh, grass enclosures and you know the uh, uh, and the uh, delivering hours and so on. It seemed to me the application does not have an agreement with staff con regard the condition use permit with the city. Um, if, if, if you have not come to that, I, I strongly recommend that you should continue this item for this so it could applicant can work closer with staff and come to agreement before come to us. Because it seems to me that uh, you keep uh, raising concern and question regarding the condition use permit that submitted to us for our review and approval. Thank you, Commissioner Gwynn. Um, I was about to also recommend the same recommendation. At this point, uh, Chair, it may be appropriate to ask if there's any public um, comment. Um, other than that, we would also recommend that this be continued for at least two weeks for staff to uh, discuss all of these um, questions uh, and to work with the applicant to resolve this issue and come back uh, with the final recommendation. That's fine. Uh, and there are public comments. So um, what I'd like to do is, like I said, Jerry, we're going to need some translation. Thank you. Can you do that? And the first person is Maria Torres. Maria, mi nombre es María Torres. Yo vengo a apoyar la 7-Eleven porque es um, una oportunidad de tener una tienda las 24 horas. Porque se nos puede ofrecer como un Pedialyte o como un Tylenol o como un galón de leche, ya que las otras tiendas están cerradas, que operan hasta las 12 de la noche algunas tiendas. María Torres. My name is Maria Torres and I support 7-Eleven because it will provide a 24 hours convenience store where I could buy produce, for example, Tylenol, Pedialyte, and other goods. Pues, sería todo. Sería todo. 
que yo estoy apoyando la 7-Eleven, porque que esté cerca de nuestra comunidad y donde estamos, y, este, y como le digo, pues nosotros necesitamos algo 24 horas que podamos. I support this project and we need a 24 hour service convenience store in the area. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, next is Gloria Torres. Mi nombre es Gloria Torres. My name is Gloria Torres. Y vengo a apoyar a que se construya el 7-Eleven. I am here to support 7-Eleven. Porque tiene muchas, este, este, um, que puede uno comprar las 24 horas de, del día si uno se enferma o because they offer services and goods that you could buy 24 hours and in case you get sick. Um, porque este, hay muchas cosas que puede uno comprar como leche en veces que se acabe la noche. You could buy milk, for example, where you finish it at night. O este, a mí me ha tocado también este, que necesito un, un, ¿cómo se llama? Un suero, un perlite y voy de emergencia y lo compro y este, estoy de acuerdo que, que se abra ese 7-Eleven y la gasolinería que quieren construir, estoy de acuerdo. For example, sometimes in emergencies I need to buy Peter Life for myself and I agree with the services that 7-Eleven will be providing as well as the gas station. Y pues es todo, muchas gracias de, de escucharme mis como este, me gustaría mucho que, que se abriera a la comunidad de nosotros. Thank you. That will conclude my recommendations. I want to thank the planning commissioners, and I agree and in support of 7-Eleven. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Obato. Uh, buenas tardes, honorables comisionados. Mi nombre es Sandra Obando. Este, Good evening, honorable chairman and commissioners. My name is Sandra Obando. Obando. Estoy aquí para apoyar el proyecto de, del 7-Eleven y la gasolinera. I am here to support the 7-Eleven convenience store and the gas station. Ya que en nuestra comunidad, pues, donde lo quieren edificar es un, un este, lugar baldío que en lugar de embellecer nuestra comunidad, pues la, la hace fea. En lugar de apoyar nuestra comunidad, eh, la hace fea. Ok. Uh, este, el lugar donde se va a edificar este proyecto es un lugar baldío. The location where this is going to be constructed is a blighted area. Y es un lugar que en lugar de embellecer nuestra ciudad, en la pone, o sea, está fea. Okay. This project will help beautify the city. Y pues eh, muchas gracias por escucharme, este, ya que, pues como le vuelvo a repetir, verdad, es un lugar muy feo para mí que estoy viendo en esa área este, y este nuevo proyecto pues beneficiaría a nuestra comunidad. Thank you for listening. Again, this project will help improve the, the overall neighborhood and turn a blighted area into a um, location that will provide services to the community. Me gusta este proyecto porque eh, del 7-Eleven porque va a estar las 24 horas abiertas. I like this project because it will provide 24-hour services. Y pues este, habría muchas luces, más seguridad, como está ahorita el área, no está muy bonita, que digamos. It will provide lighting and security and a pleasant location to look at. Muchas gracias y Dios los bendiga. Y esperemos que apoye, apoyen este pro, nuevo proyecto del 7-Eleven. Gracias. Thank you and God bless you and we wish that you support this project.
Thank you, Sandra. Marcela Garcias, Garcia. Buenas tardes, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Maricela. Good evening, good night. My name is Maricela. También yo vengo apoyando para el 7-Eleven. I am here to support 7-Eleven. Porque nos hace falta mucho, porque en la noche, para una emergencia, a los pamper, leche, medicina, y, y luego sándwich para los niños de la escuela, para un café, chocolate. Because we need the services that 7-Eleven provides, for example, sandwiches and coffees, as well as snacks for the, for the kids. Ensaladas. Salads. <laughs> Y pues sí, quisiera que se apoyara eso y el gasolín que también se pusiera porque ahí está muy baldío y está muy grande y está bien para un 7-Eleven y está en la pura esquina. I support 7-Eleven as well as the gas station because it is going to convert a blighted area and this location is adequate for both the convenience store and the gas station. Y pues quisiera que nos apoyaran para que pusieran eso porque sí nos hace falta un 7-Eleven ahí en la esquina. And we wish that you would support this 7-Eleven at this corner. Para las sodas, hielo, todo eso que, por la calor que se va a venir y nos hace falta ahí. For, especially for the drinks, especially for the summer times that's coming up. <laughs> y es todo. Gracias. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that, Marcella. Balbina Del Delgado. Buenas noches a todos, señores comisionados. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Yo estoy aquí para apoyar que construyan la 7-Eleven allí en ese lugar donde está programado porque es una bu buena área para todas las personas que viven en esas áreas y... I am here to support the construction of the 7-Eleven as it will benefit the um, general vicinity. Para cualquier cosa, pues uno va allí a hacer cualquier compra leve y, y pues es recomendable que, que abran esa tienda porque tiene de todo. For our needs, this will provide um, services and goods at a convenient location. Y yo quisiera que por favor a, Apoyen todos para construir ese lugar. And I'm here to request that this body um, recommends consideration of approval of the 7-Eleven. Que yo estoy muy de acuerdo y apoyo el lugar. I am here in support of the location and project. Uh, gracias de antemano y muy buenas tardes. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank evening. you, Bobina. Este, me gustaría decirle a las señoras que vinieron esta noche que me da mucho gusto verlas aquí, que tuvieron el valor de venir y dar su posición y representar sus comunidades, especialmente cuando no conocen el idioma y tuvieron ese valor. Así que gracias que vinieron. I just wanted to thank the ladies that were here. I thank them for their courage to come, especially when they don't know the language and they still came out to represent their community and their families. Drew Sicardi. Okay. Seema Olson and Chris Galbino. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Sherry Olson. I'm in support of the project. 
Um, I uh, was one of the uh, community outreach spokesmen for the area and held the meetings, the community group meetings, and listened to all the neighbors' concern. We held uh, two meetings in the community. We did the mailers, um, and we also walked the neighborhoods and met with our neighbors out there. Uh, there, a lot of them were really excited. There were some that had some concerns, and we tried to address all the concerns out there with our neighbors, and uh, were, you know, well, you know, happy to be going into this location. And, you know, I've been to the site several times, and I can say it does need some attention. So we'll be, you know, looking forward to cleaning that up and making it a safe area for the community to enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, anyone at this point in time that would like to speak on this item? Hearing none, we're going to oh, okay. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is uh, Diego Sarate. I'm a resident of Santa Ana, specifically in that location for the last 23 years of my life. Um, and I actually do not support the building of the 7-Eleven for various reasons. Um, there was a commissioner, I believe David, uh, mentioned a lot of the concerns that the um, some of the uh, committee and com uh, community leaders around our area uh, are concerned, uh, especially the safety component. Um, that area is a very fragile area. Um, growing up myself, I was around the, um, the when, when there was a homelessness um, shelter there. Um, so I grew up around a lot of um, drugs, uh, narcotics, um, prostitution. I remember getting asked for all these um, services and obviously I, I, I didn't want any of it because I'm uh, a family member. Um, but um, also the other component that um, is really um, effective in our end is the fact that it's going to create more traffic for us, uh, especially off of uh, First Street and on Daisy. Um, and again, going back to the fragile component, um, if you guys are aware of the location, maybe about three, four blocks uh, south of where it's located, um, it is a lot of apartment complexes. Uh, there is a pretty big gang there, and I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of it. Um, and there's a lot of trouble that I think is going to create more, uh, less opportunity for a brighter future in my community, at least in my neighborhood. Um, and again, I'm here uh, representing, I went to all the meetings, the first two meetings that they were uh, done at the Mona Vista um, Elementary. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the uh, other individuals that were there um, which were, which were also um, community uh, members. Uh, I believe it was eight of us or nine of us that were there and we were always against it. I'm surprised they're not here. Um, but again, we're against it and I don't think this is a, a good thing for my community. And thank you for your time again. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anyone else at this point in time that would like to speak? Excuse me, did, did you fill out a card earlier? I did not, I'm the property owner. Okay, all right, that's fine. <coughs> I'm Come sorry. Up, fill, out, fill it out after, after you complete. Will do, my name is Chris Rodriguez, I'm the property owner. I just wanted to respond, um, I forget the gentleman's name that just spoke, but the, uh, the last meeting, him, uh, he was the sole uh, voice of dissension. There was a couple that, lives uh, the most impacted residential property uh, just across Daisy just had some concerns just about hours of operation and things of that nature and they were uh, you know their concerns were very legitimate and we addressed them and spoke to them about that but I just wanted to comment on the traffic uh, there's there's no use that you can put onto any property on that street that's going to create more traffic the traffic's already there it's just who's going to capture the traffic there's already 40,000 cars a day on the street Putting 7-Eleven there isn't going to make 48,000 cars a day. Same amount of cars. So as far as the traffic impact is concerned, I just want to speak to that. It's no net negative impact. Cars are already there. So, um, you know, you'll have to forgive me. I'm just like kind of responding to a couple things. But uh, what I can tell you as the owner of the property is we deal with uh, the things Mr. Uh, Mr. Benavides brought up that for us, we see a tenant like 7-Eleven going in with 24-hour operation as solving the security problem. A store that has uh, uh, being operated by a company that operates 14,000 stores around the world, they're really good operators. They take security very seriously. When you have that many locations, you're gonna have experience every single type of security measure possible being a retailer. So having lighting, cameras, 24-hour operation solves the problem that I've personally been dealing with for the last three, four years. Homelessness, uh, human defecation, um, 
dangerous fire started by homeless. We literally have had two or three arrests on the property, fenced the property. Um, we have people that go there two or three times a week to check for it, clean it out, talk to the um, law enforcement. We had an issue, t I just got a text from my partner literally two hours ago that we had to have people kicked out of the room where the water heater used to be, the water heater's been stolen. Every time we go there, it's just constant. Hypodermic needles, uh, pipes, drug paraphernalia. So, you know, the issue is that 7-Eleven's not gonna create that problem. 7-Eleven, I think, is gonna solve that problem. Um, you know, our, I grew up in Santa Ana, Tustin, uh, unincorporated area, and went to Tustin High, so I spent a lot of my youth shopping growing up you know in, in these areas so I, I've seen it all from 1977 all the way till today and I think that this street especially if you look at the zoning plan and changes that are the city wants along that street somebody's got to be the first shoe to drop and I've been doing you know I've been in commercial real estate for 22 years you got to get that first tenant on the street to show the other tenants that development on that street is viable and this would be the first shoe to drop. And I think that as that happens and as the zoning changes, you start seeing property values increase. That's gonna be good for everybody, the community, sales tax revenue for the city. But can you wrap, can you yeah, yeah, but the, the first shoe has to drop and we'd, we'd really like to be that. And I do think that 7-Eleven solves the security issue that um, Mr. Benavides and the previous speaker brought up because having a tenant there is better than no tenant. Appreciate that, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so having, hearing no more for the public hearing at this point in time, we will continue it until the May 28th meeting. Is that acceptable from staff's point of view? All right, we will need a motion to continue the meeting to May 20, continue this action item until uh, May 28th. Ken? Second. Cynthia is seconding it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six zero. Two absence, one absence for Eric Alderetti. Thank you. Para las señoras que están aquí, el tema de hoy se va a extender hasta el 28 de mayo. Entonces, ahora no hubo voto. Thank you for your, for your time. Okay, now is the time to uh, consider item number two, regional plan signing program, sign program number 2018-01 for the Discovery Cube of Orange County located at 2500 North Main Street. Note, the decision on this matter is final unless appealed within 10 days of the decision of any interested party of the group. If you wish to address the Planning Commission, please come up and fill out a uh, request to speak. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Before beginning, do any of the commissioners have anything to disclose regarding this item? I do, I did talk with um, a representative of the Discovery Cube with regards to this item, uh, Sean, Ken, Sean, Sean Fitzgerald, and uh, it was via telephone when we discussed the matter at hand. Um, anybody else? That's it. Vince? Mr. Chairman, Planning Commissioners, good evening. The action before you is a regional plan sign program for the Discovery Cube of Orange County. The project before you is a request to adopt a regional plan sign program and within this program, we're looking to allow a variety of signage, uh, essentially some permanent wall signs near the entry, temporary banners, and some rooftop inflatable signs. And as part of the action, there's some signage that was approved under the zoning document that if this, this uh, application is approved, we'll remove that signage from the SD. So essentially what they're asking for is what you've seen for the past 20 years at the, at the uh, Discovery Cube. And I'll call it the Cube to be short. I think most of you know the location there. It's right there on North Main Street, uh, just off the IFI Freeway. It's uh, that highlighted in yellow there. Discovery Cube's the bottom right, then it goes uh, northwest, and there's a parking lot that goes under the Broadway Bridge. So that's the Discovery Cube location. A little bit of background on regional plan sign programs and Discovery. 
this project was a former warehouse building. It was a, a moving company building on Main Street for years. Discovery came in in the late 90s. I believe it was 1999. I believe it was their 20th birthday of this year, maybe 21. And they came in and bought this building and redeveloped it as a small little museum. And it's just grown exponentially in, in popularity. And uh, they've expanded on the, the location a couple of times, amended their sign program, amended their zoning a couple of times to add in a, 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 a theater and other types of activities there. So they're going very well right now, and they are a regional draw. So within the zoning document that was approved 20 years ago, there's the SD, specific zoning, which had some signage requirements in that document there. And what was included in that document was an electronic sign that you see right now on the fire freeway. It's kind of an L-shaped sign. And they also had some uh, a monument sign as well as some, some banners on Main Street. And those are the signs that are gonna be removed, the monument sign and banners on Main Street. So what happened here, they have a sign program as part of their facility there. In 2014, this body and the city council approved a document called the Regional Plan Sign Program, which recognizes unique uses in the city. Uh, those could be the Main Place Mall. They have a couple of digital signs at the Main Place Mall. Uh, the uh, Tom's Trucks, the site there on Grand Avenue, and museums such as Discovery Science Center. So that program was developed with this type of use in mind, and specifically Discovery Science Center was also in our mind as well when we developed this program. So again, what they can do, they can create, essentially they come to the city with a unique sign program and we negotiate and try to find a program that meets our needs as well as their needs. So this document here, it's also in your staff report, shows the location of seven signs that we're talking about. Sign number two and number seven are existing. Two is that, that digital sign, the old fashioned digital sign they have right there facing the fire freeway. Seven is their uh, welcome and their ticket sign. The rest of them are banners that you've seen throughout the years here if you've driven by this location. Number one's a banner for the, on the cube itself. Uh, number three, four, and five are temporary banners that change out uh, quarterly or semi-annually depending on type of exhibits, the special activities that go on. Uh, actually four, I believe, is the uh, Bubble Fest. It's a rooftop sign as well as a banner that describes their most popular activity, which is the Bubble, Fe Bubble Fest uh, event that occurs every spring break uh, um, in the city here. And then the sign six is a sign facing Main Street, and then seven is their front entrance, which is permanent signs. So I just have three signs I want to talk to you about briefly because I believe the applicant will kind of talk about these as well. And you have all the signs in your packet there in front of you that's presented to you. But sign three is a, uh, a banner sign that staff is recommending in one of the conditions that they remove it. And the reason we're asking it to be removed is that, it, as you can see, it, it conflicts with some architectural enhancements of the building there. And this sign has been up for years, about 20 years, but just in looking at their own sign program, it makes some sense to kind of let the building speak to the community, let that architectural uniqueness show, and not have that banner at this location. So that's one of the conditions that you have inside that's uh, for you to consider tonight. Sign four is the Bubble Fest banner. Again, that comes up uh, for three weeks a year. Bubble Fest is a rooftop inflatable. And then below is the banner. It changes every year, depending on when spring break is, as the date changes. And part of their, their ask that I believe will come before you tonight is looking at maybe some potential for maybe a couple of other uh, rooftop inflatables. So this is sign number four. And then sign number five, it used to be their sponsor banner. It was Micro Semi, it was Stanbridge, and there was a third banner out there, uh, identifier there. Um, questionable if it's even allowed by Caltrans standards, so we are take the cautious route and says you can't have that out there. Signs have to comply with, um, they have to advertise something occurring on the premises. And if they do, then they're exempt from Caltrans standards. So this banner will be a banner that advertises, identifies some type of unique exhibit that's coming in in the near future. Could be something about ice, something about power, just all different, different types of uh, potential there. But this one here is gonna replace the uh, sponsored banner at this location. Analyzing the project here, uh, we take a look and see there's three findings we have to make and uh, include them as a consistent in size and scale. You know, the signage is safe, it's gonna be creating kind of hazards and the answer is no. This, all these signs proposed are gonna be all designed to be not hazardous to the community or to the motoring public. Um, these signs help enhance and market Discovery Cube, again, a unique regional draw and um, this types of uh, signage helps them separate their message because they change programs and they change exhibits quite often. So this type of banner is good for them to constantly change every three or four months on the go. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they're gonna relinquish some rights to a couple of signs in the SD. A monument sign and four banners on Main Street will be removed. They won't put those up. 
with this project here. And then we've been talking to the uh, Discovery about, hey, what about digital science? That seems the kind of sign that's out there. They love the idea. They want to explore the idea. It's a funding issue. Basically, the funding's not there right now, but they think in the next three to five years, they'll be coming back before this body with some kind of unique signage, in which case these banners may go away and we'll have some kind of digital sign out there. But that's for the future there. And wrapping it all up, our staff has reviewed it and recommends approval of the sign program as conditioned in your reports. Thank you. I'm available for any questions that you may have. Does the commission have any questions of staff? Yes, I do. Can you? Uh, Go ahead. Since the, the uh, wine, the applicant does not want to consider the digital signage um, instead of the regular banner because of the, the, because of cost, because of the regulation, or what? Why they did not go to digital? Because if, to me, digital signage they can change it, whatever as they like, and also. With new technology nowadays, you can put the very nice graphic on it and change constantly, then be more animated and so on, and more attractive to children. Absolutely, yeah, that is an option they want to explore down the road. Again, it came down to cost. Um, there, it, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, funding takes time to do funding. They'll need to identify this as a program they want to achieve, and then it, they, in conversations, you're looking at about five years to be able to achieve the funding to put in these digital signs, which are you know close to a million dollars or plus for these types of signs. So that is on their radar. We've also talked to them, you know, men's idea about do something with the cube, yeah. some kind of unique lighting with the cube also. Um, so we have all kinds of options that we have. It's, it's funding. It comes down to funding. So this is something temporary for them, again, because they change out exhibits. The banners can come and go and, and display and convey what's happening at the facility. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, with respect to uh, the, the document that we provided, it talked about the fact that all the banners had to have the Santa Ana seal on it, the city of Santa Ana seal. And, it, and you keep on saying, and I think it's true, you know, the Discovery Cube is considered a regional facility, something that's visited by the county, throughout the county and outside the county and I'm just wondering you know what the, what benefit does the discovery have of having to change out all those signage to come up with some kind of you know, signage that has the seal of Santa Ana. Sure right and I believe we changed the condition uh, I'm looking here condition number five says that their digital sign that they have right now, and most of you recognize it as a very old fashioned digital sign, They'll, they will identify and, and welcome people in the Santa Ana on that message right there because they can just type it in and, and the information kind of go across the screen and say welcome to Santa Ana or Discovery Cube at Santa Ana. So that will be, that condition five says put it in that digital sign, not on the banners. So it's in the digital sign. Yes, sir. Because originally it was on the banners. Correct. That was our initial thoughts was put it somewhere on the banner, like the cube, for instance, what's up there, it's very prevalent. So we've gone from that and put it as the digital sign. There's a, there's a huge cost associated with that. There is. The signs and everything else. There now is. Now the PSA aspect, everybody I think is in favor of the PSA aspect of doing that, but that is also tied to the digital side of it, or is it going to be well, something that's going to be done on a, on a, what I call analog, where it's just printed? Well, right now, Condition 10 says they need to make it available for PSA if we ask for it. So we could say we'd like to put up a banner of, you know, recognizing the Planning Commission winning an award or something like that. So we would pay for it. We'd do all the efforts and put it up, and they would have to agree to let us install it on the building. That's what Condition 10 says. And I believe that may be something they bring up as well tonight. Right. So the, city's, the city bears the cost of the PSA for that, for the city's? That's correct, and for the city's any banner. Any organization that's accepted as a PSA, right. they, they will pay for the, they'll pay the cost. That's correct. Won't We'd cost the cube anything. That's you correct. Know, in, all, in, in all due respect, we're dealing with a nonprofit, and I think, that, you know, it's a challenge these days to keep, you know, funding things like that. I mean, it's something I think would be fair to everybody. Right. Okay. And, and this body knows this is a very standard con comment on all regional plan sign programs, but what you've seen is the digital signs. That's why it's so easy. The mall has them. Um, Tom's trucks has them. It, they all, it's easy to put them in that right. you know, digital science. This was a little bit different. Sign, a little digital, bit different. Yeah, on a digital sign, like Commissioner Wynn said, it's, it's, 20, it's 20 minutes, it's done, it's over with. Yeah. Um, on something that's on a canvas, on a vinyl, it's two or three days, four days, 10 days type thing. So yeah. there's a lot of handling in between. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how much we'll use it. We just want the opportunity to be able to put something up there just in case. No, and we also have the mall next door that advertises for us as well. They have the requirement for the PSAs. All right. Thanks, Vince. Does anybody else have any bullets? No? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Vince. Okay. Madam Secretary, have we received any written communication on this item? We have not. Okay. We'll now open up for public hearing. Would the applicant at this point in time like to come up to speak? Good evening, Mr. Commissioner, uh, Mr. Chairman and the commissioners. I'm Kelly Preston. I am the chief operating officer for Discovery Cube. I've been with the Discovery Cube for 16 years. I want to thank you for the time tonight to be able to speak on our plan program. I also want to thank the planning department. The staff has been amazing. Uh, appreciate their time and particularly our contact, Vince. Uh, very flexible with our, our conversations ongoing. Um, I'd also uh, like to point out that Discovery Cube's been in the community of Santa Ana, which we call home, for almost now 21 years, and we appreciate the opportunity. We've enjoyed a very professional and productive working relationship, and uh, this process that we've gone through has been no exception. We look forward to the future. We want to thank the staff's guidance. Uh, has been able to reach a full um, uh, agreement in all but maybe three conditions that I'd like to speak on tonight. Uh, with respect to condition number eight, the rooftop inflatables, we would respectfully request that uh, we are allowed to continue to display rooftop inflatable a maximum of just four months out of the year. For over 17 years, we've had promoted our seasonal exhibits with inflatables directly themed to those exhibits that we have inside. This provides a highly impactful and cost-effective marketing tool for the Cube, and as a nonprofit, it's very invaluable. Oh, pardon me. Pardon. They did change. Um, and I want to be clear, condition eight, uh, removing the location of sign number three, did that change? Or condition 11? Sign number three? Yes. So condition number nine, removing sign location number three. <laughs> We respectfully request to keep this signage location. The signage location has also been used for 17 years and it provides us amazing uh, audience reach to those who travel on the five freeway. And, and that, you know, again, as a marketing tool and it's invaluable for the cube. And the last condition, uh, I believe is 12, is the PSAs. Want to confirm that? 10? Condition 10. Uh, we are fully supportive of this. Uh, this condition and we're happy to work with the city to support all local causes that are very near and dear to all of us I only wanted to mention this that this condition to clarify that we do not have a programmable uh, Video board that is uh, customizable as Tom's truck or the main place mall as such We like to provide a host of maybe more simple approaches that we are uh, more flexible to do we like to promote and offer up instead of a banner or something that maybe comes on our property but a little bit, again, flexible, the Discovery Cube website to promote PSAs, Discovery Cube social media, which would be Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, our digital uh, video screens inside the Discovery Cube lobby, where we can promote to the PSAs. We do promote out membership and community newsletters. We'd offer that up also as reasonable. And then a seasonal flyers, this is where we may have a cost from the um, city to support but we'd also hand those out in our parking uh, lot to the guests that park here. So a little bit more flexible option since we don't at this time, we do in the future wish to, but we don't have this time a digital um, board. Uh, we would like to offer that up. So again, thank you for this opportunity tonight and I will welcome any questions. Does the commission have any questions of Kelly? I um, in regard to number seven, why was it that they have to um, why did we add this exception to them for the inflatables? Uh, was your question, what exception are they asking for? Um, they said they did not agree with um, right. condition number okay. seven. So they want to see why it was put, um, why it was limited, the inflatables that they are putting out there. Because we just feel that the, the Bubble Fest inflatable is a unique type of activity that's occurred at, the, at this location. Again, they've had it up there for years. So we've accepted the Bubble Fest rooftop inflatable. But we just think with all the different signage they have on the building that they may not need any other rooftop inflatables. So what they're asking for is to change that, that condition or allow them. What it says in the program is that they're 
Bubble Fest will be up for three weeks. Three. For three weeks during spring break, and they're asking for just for four months. There are other options for other ones, and what the options could be, I, I don't know. They've had other inflatables in the past over the years, so they've been different a variety of inflatables. But so they're asking for three more months essentially on rooftops. documentation we received, you know, the inflatables were considered to be light. They were blighted, and yet, you know, we can al allow one, but, you know, Discovery's asking for, like, three or four months of having potentially maybe two or three others. Yes. Is, is, it, is it really that much blight that we have with that, that we have to concern ourselves with that? Quite honestly, it's very subjective. I mean, they've had inflatables again in the past, and people have noticed them. They've done their They've done what they're intended to do. They brought uh, attention to the discovery and also the staff as well. So, Cynthia, did you receive community complaints about that, or no? No, we have not. Nope. So, what did you guys use to um, Lim limit them? That determination. That the, the original proposal by the, the cube was the rooftop inflatable for the bubble fest only. Then, within the last week. Two weeks, they said, "Hey, we'd like to just consider other inflatables." So, what made the Discovery Science Center change their mind? I imagine they saw the condition and got them thinking about what their future is out there and what's helped them sell. Right. We we were not aware until we saw the condition. We thought our rooftop inflatables were all approved because we've been doing it for 17 years. And then when we saw that, it was just a deemed solely for bubble fest, then we came back to the condition that we would like it as it stands now, that we can put up a rooftop inflatable with any traveling exhibit that comes. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, my concern here is, is that, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is clean up our paperwork in some respect to make sure that everything that's being done at this point in time on the building is acceptable. I mean, that's the intent of getting this particular item passed at this point in time so that everything that they've done and it's all been done in the past is now going to be in compliance from a signage perspective for the museum, whether it be the Discovery Museum or some of the other locations. So my question is, why are we taking exception to a number of these items just because? I haven't heard any, any reason or justification that says we really don't think that this is a safe way of doing things and this is why we don't have to have, this is why we don't want this sign in this location it is blight and uh, sure. we're, we're just trying to strike a balance between the building the amount of signage and what's not blight so it's again it's, it's subjective so that's why they proposed this their signage okay david so chair uh to have a question for the applicant the with regard to that condition number seven and the inflatables besides bubble fest what are the other uh, <coughs> events uh, or are there inflatables that you have used and or that you would propose to, to use going forward? No, thank you. We're looking uh, forward to being able to bring back Winter Wonderfest. It's our holiday event and we had an inflatable at that time as kind of opposite of our spring break where we do see a lot of um, our community come to the cube and we'd like to be able to put that uh, inflatable back up. Do you do, do you have a, uh, I'm trying to, trying to identify the, the times that you would be requesting. So is it, is it specifically three, is it three months? Is it four months or is there specific times? Historic, sure, of course, historically over the last 17, 18 years, we've either, um, and I want to qualify it, there could be also a traveling exhibit that comes through the summer that would have an associated traveling or um, inflatable. We just, you know, book goes out two, three years in advance, so not aware of that, but we, we could use it then also, not only the holiday, but historically, through the last um, 17 plus years, we've normally had a, a inflatable up a maximum of four months through the year, so it's just been our, our history. Uh, thank you for, for that. And, and I would think that the, uh, just as a comment now, I understand and I appreciate that staff's uh, asking the questions and, and some of those, we, we do need to strike a balance, right? After a while, if something is not, part of what makes the bubble fest, for example, or the inflatables, uh, uh, 
unique and attractive. It's it, that it's it's unique. It's 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 different when you're driving down, when you're walking, if, when you're driving down either the freeway or Main, you see it, uh, or Broadway, the bridge. Uh, if something just becomes static after a while, it's not necessarily something that is unique. It just becomes part of the fabric of what you see, and 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 it's it's so if if so. That's where I could see that that, that balance, that stack stri trend strike between just the aesthetics of our city, uh, and uh, and and yet still trying to uh, work with the, uh, uh, the the attractions in the city. In this case, uh, the the Discovery Q, uh, and with that, you know, I, I do appreciate also staffs uh, when when I saw that, including Santa Ana in the signage was something that was being recommended within the, the staff report itself, but not, not the condition. Uh, uh, that the sign said, these conditions include incorporating Santana into any permanent sign that should be installed in the premises. So that's still spelled out in here. Uh, I, I think that's a positive thing. I, I think that's a good thing. We want to, uh, so it's same, the reason why you have the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, you know, it's Anaheim is there because it, we want to make sure to stand out, it, it to, to call out that uh, this, this, uh, that in that case, that team and, and that stadium is, is within Anaheim and promote that, promote that. I think we want to also, we're proud of Discovery Cube. We're, we're proud of, we've been partners from day one as a, as a city. Uh, this is not the first conditional uh, use or permits that we would have been allowing. There's a number of other ones that we have uh, looked at across, you know, over the years because we want them to, uh, to succeed, to do well, and so to to demonstrate and highlight that partnership by uh, by branding this as a as a Santa Ana attraction, I, I think is a is a good thing, and, and we should uh, look to promote that and, and to uh, 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 call out that partnership. I, I uh, and along those lines, on condition ten it says any PSA sign to be installed <coughs> shall be at the sole expense of the city. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if the uh, others, for example, other, uh, at least the ones, the digital ones, uh, at the Auto Mall and at the Tom's Trucks, I don't, I don't know if there's any cost to the city. In fact, that was part of the condition, as I recall, that, that there no. would be uh, some branding of the city. And, and, and there's, uh, no, there's no cost to the city. There's no cost yeah. for electronic message board right. signs. So so I'm curious what what, what, you what the intent was if we were to look at possibly banners that okay. we would not uh, we would incur the cost of okay. creating the banners and installation and not have to place it onto the queue um, uh, organization for the cost of that okay. Wh where so that that that's if there's a fixed cost I, I could see that uh, with regard to in in the staff report there's mention of including incorporating Santa Ana, and doesn't necessarily say Santa Ana Seal, but it says the words Santa Ana to any permanent <coughs> signage should be installed on the premise. And again, this, this calls out this permanent signage versus replacing banners and such. Uh, is that still going to be incorporated? I, I, it's, it's in the staff report, and the only reference is Santa Ana in, that I see in the condition. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I see number five, actually. Correct. Condition yeah, totally five correct. asked that it be um, working with the electronic message board, and that could be either through the messaging or even incorporating something on the reader board uh, along with where it says discovery. It could be discovery at Santa Ana. Yeah. You know, I think you are very right. correct in terms of illustrating the long history the city has with the organization. Um, the organization bring quite a bit of notoriety to our city, and I think it would be proud to be a part of uh, a name um, – because you do have multiple locations, right, uh, throughout the the, uh, the region, so it might be good to identify this as Discovery Cube at Santa Ana. But you know that's something we're flexible to work with. Um, the goal is to uh, to be a partner um, and, and to help continue support the the cube. Um, as relates to the Bubble Fest, as I mentioned, and um, I'm sorry, as as Vince mentioned. This was a request by the cube, so that was conditioned that way. At this point, if there's a request for us to look at something differently, I think we need to evaluate that. Um, of course, the commission is free to, to make its own decision, but we haven't seen um, what the proposal uh, 
in just terms of time as well as what, what, what are the inflatables that would look like. So we would request with the opportunity to review that before making recommendation. And, and, la and last uh, question, thank you, Mr. Uh, Planning Director. I, I do have for the, the applicant. Condition number nine, you, you call that, that, that condition currently says that sign number three uh, is to be removed. And, and I believe that the applicant is requesting that we strike that condition. Can you speak to that, uh, why you would, wh why that request and, and uh, that just help us understand it. But staff was clear, uh, I think that it's, uh, as I understood it, the currently this is a, a temporary banner However, it's been there for, for quite some time. So it's, it's gone from essentially temporary to, I think, a static long-term. And staff's uh, suggestion is that it detracts from the, the building itself, the architecture and such. Uh, however, you're requesting that, that it stay. Can you speak to, to that some more? Sure, we, um, uh, I might stand uh, correct it. We reviewed the sign ordinance and we didn't really say anything that said if something was not architecturally pleasing um, regarding a sign. I understand and I would appreciate blight or something that's imposing, but we've had a sign in that location, which there's 650,000 cars a day that goes there. So the opportunity for a nonprofit to market again is invaluable. We've had a sign there almost 17, 18 years and it is up maybe six months a year, it promotes whatever our, our core initiative, our program going on inside or the traveling exhibit. Um, we've had actually, because I've been with the queue for 16 years, to my knowledge, we've had no complaints from our neighbors or the community around it. So I'm not still sure why that's being strike from it because it's really invalu invaluable to us just as a marketing tool and promotion and get the community in. Th thank you for that. And I, I could see the value, I could see what you're mm -hmm. stating. And, and, and what I would say as a proud resident of Santa Ana and proud, uh, uh, my kids are not, they're all in high school, teenagers now, so, but for yeah. some time we were members and mm -hmm. when they were little yeah. we, we, we enjoyed uh, both Bubble Fest and, and a number of other uh, uh, events and brought family and friends from, from the region throughout. So very proud of, of, of the Discovery Cube being in, here in Santa Ana. Uh, and I definitely understand that the signage creates marketing, creates the appeal, mm -hmm. it, it's visible to the traffic and, and, and such. So, so you would understand as a proud resident of Santa Ana and, and you know, the, uh, 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 the reason why I, I would also see value in, in having Santa Ana somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so at present it's, it, it, I don't necessarily, uh, it's reference, but it's, it's not very clear as to where or how Santa Ana would be presented. So, so what I would, suggest and request as, as there are requests being made of the, of the city uh, to, to allow for some variances and such. Uh, I would be really interested in, in, in hearing, and I don't know necessarily now you would have an answer for that, but how we could potentially incorporate, how the Discovery Cube would, would invite and incorporate you know, Santana within some of the, the, the signage uh, going forward. So that there's a, a mutual sure. you know, benefit and, and, and such if we were to be able to allow for it, like sign three, for example, or, or inflatables to be up for a month so that it could mm -hmm. reach your, your goals and, and, and your desires, you know, to see how we would might, might be able to have, you know, the, the city itself be, you know, also uh, you know, promoted, you know, jointly, you know, through. through no, that absolutely, signage. and that's when we had opportunity to replace the sign that's on the corner, because we're celebrating this last year, our 20th anniversary, that was something we put up there right away, you know, um, celebrating 20 years in Santa Ana. So we were very proud of that, and as signs continue to come, you know, is definitely, you know, our um, opportunity, and it's our desire to incorporate the city more and more. You know, just uh, being here over 20 years, we are the part of the community. Right. So that that currently, that's the way it currently dis displays the. Yes. The yeah. Uh, the sign we put on the corner okay. Okay. of um, the building. It does say so. It might be in your package. It says celebrating I, I 20 years in Santa Ana. I don't know if that was conceptual or if that. No, was, no, that's. I don't remember. Yeah, I that's an actually year-long sign we put up. Uh, probably in November. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sure, of course. Any other questions, uh, Kelly? Kelly, thank you. Oh, thank you for your time. And um, Kelly was the only card that we had for this item, so at this point in time, we'll close the uh, public hearing and bring it back to the commission. 
any comments on this at this point in time? Well, I would have a, a question, Mr. Chair, for, for staff. Uh, if there, so there are a couple of requests that were different from what's currently in the report and on the conditions. One is condition seven to be, uh, to remove the, the exception to the public fest and allow for others. And then uh, condition number nine, the request by the applicant now is to strike that, uh, that condition. Uh, if there was specific, I just, I wanna go back to the planning director to, to clarify so the commission can better understand if the, the interest of the commission w was to allow for inflatables beyond, beside, in addition to Bubble Fest to a total of four months, d did I understand that staff would request to have that, to consider that further and then in essence continue the item or would it suffice to, for the commission to take action to allow for that for just a general uh, term of you know, four months a year and then the staff would look to clarify further with the applicant if that were to be approved or recommended by the, by the commission. So before I answer that question, I'd like to outline the um, staff's perspective on um, the uh, Bubble Fest uh, inflatables. Um, one of the goal of the regional science program is to look at the unique characteristics of the site, the use of the site, where it's located, and help tailor a science program that would enhance uh, visibility, advertising, but also um, not necessarily create clutter or blight. Uh, inflatables, as you understand, is not an architectural part of a building, whereas signs can actually be incorporated into architectural part of the building. As you saw, the banners um, can be incorporated into the walls. The banners can be incorporated right into the cube surface. So those are existing building surface areas or building features that um, then can be modified to address and, and accommodate the signs, whereas the inflatables are freestanding and they will create their own, for a lack of better um, visual massing right? Uh, their own height, their own uh, basically uh, addition to the building. So for that purpose, I think um, there are uh, aesthetic issues that we need to understand. Um, there are uh, understanding of what the different shapes could be so that we can understand how it affects the building. Um, it will be f for 25 percent of the time during the year and we haven't evaluated that. So if the commissions is considering something like that, I would recommend um, that we understand better what they're proposing in terms of the extension, both the time and the type of balloons and inflatables that are permitted. Inflatables are actually not permitted in our code. Uh, it's very specifically uh, indicated. However, through uh, a regional sign program, the planning commission can consider it. And I think the reason for being is that it does have an impact to the visibility aesthetics uh, value of a site, of a building, and also how it's attached, and, you know. Uh, obviously, we cannot regulate the message, and we're not intended to regulate the message, but we wanna make sure that the visual blight is not created and that it's in harmony with the architectural design of the building. So, to answer your question, if the, com the commission, I would recommend that the commission, if you were to consider this, is for allow staff to talk to the applicant, work with the applicant, and get a better understanding and we can come back with a recommendation on that request. But this particular recommendation is actually tailored to what we thought the application was. Uh, thank you, I'll, I'll bring it back to the chairman. I, I, uh, I, I think overall it's my, my I'll, I'll provide some of my thoughts. I'm not necessarily uh, ready to make a motion per se yet, but just for further discussion uh, by the commission. Uh, I, I think there is some potential uh, uh, partnership and, and trade-off here, if you will. I, I do think when, whenever and wherever there is an opportunity to highlight the city, uh, I think it's a, it's a positive thing. And, and wherever we can somehow more clearly incorporate that and include that, I think that that would be a, 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 a positive, again, positive thing and a benefit. 
with regard to that sign number three. It's been there for some time. I understand the uh, perspective uh, presented by, by staff with regard to uh, it, that, that sign not necessarily contributing to the aesthetic and architecture. However, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see necessarily a, a, a pressing need or reason to remove in similar fashion that the inflatables that they they have been there and I think that they've been the, the, the benefit the positive thing is that they've been tastefully done so that's that's I think it adds some credibility how right I definitely understand the staff's uh, question because if I, I, I would agree that it should be more clearly spelled out rather than just leaving it you know open again right now we've been lucky that that it's been done well uh, however if, if it's not very clearly spelled out that can change, they get a new vendor, they do management change or something to that effect, and then we could be potentially stuck with something that is does become visual blight. So how that's addressed, I'm not exactly sure. I would okay. you know, have the professionals kind of uh, help address that. So that's my, my general you know, feedback right. comment. Thank you, David. Ken? Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, the uh, sign number three is necessary for Discovery Q to promote it location for the traffic on the heavy traffic in the major freeway in Orange County. Um, I have brought my children to visit Discovery um, Q Center about 20 years ago, and I, now I br keep bringing my grandchildren to, Discovery, to, to visit Discovery Q Center, because to me, in my opinion, Discovery Q is, Q is a, a great sign learning um, opportunity for the, the, our children in Orange County, especially it's a landmark in, uh, in Orange County as well in Southern California, and it is is a great tourist attraction to bring in tourists to Santa Ana, and the the partnership between Discovery Q and the City of Santa Ana should be continued and to be enhanced. And they think with our position, the two positions we, I'm looking at it here. Number one is a considered a land use position. Land this whatever we Discovery Q requesting. It's, it does not require any barrier, any exception. It's a meet with the, our, our city code and, and our job. I think they should support this QRQ, whatever they need to promote a center. And I would like to motion to approve the, region, uh, the regional plan design program 2018-01 as condition. Um, I'm also in favor of all the signage and would recommend removing condition number seven and nine. I would not like to limit their marketing tools. Um, so that's how I stand so far. Okay. So you have a motion to approve as condition and I will, I will consider it, adapt the, you know, the, the consider the, uh, mo uh, the, uh, 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 yeah, removal of the si si condition number seven, seven and number Yeah. And I would like to make a motion, and this is so that because the project came to us this way and it's different now here at Matthias, so I'd like to make a motion to um, return this back to planning to look at what's been talked about tonight and come back with a more solid proposal. But you're asking for a continuance. A continuance. We, we currently 